Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today. There were rumors abound that the Steam Summer Sale was returning on this very day, and now it has officially happened, so therefore, here is my hot take on the Steam Summer Sale. We've done this for three years now. If you're new to these sale videos, I do them usually around the winter, as well as the summer, and I give you guys my hot take on all the games that I think are on great deals. Now, I wanna preface all of this by letting you know you'll see in the cards as the video goes on, and there will be links in the description down below to previous hot takes on the Steam Summer Sale. So if there's a game I don't mention, like for example, The Witcher 3, there is a reason for it. I have suggested them before. I like to recommend new games every year. And that's what we're going to be doing today, starting off with this excellent presentation for the Steam Grand Prix. I really like how they laid out the Steam sale this time around. And we have Devil May Cry 5 in the middle for $40. Now, if you saw right here, I just picked it up. If you follow me on Twitch, you know, I just started streaming that game and it is excellent. It is seriously so much fun. Some of the most enriching combat, uh, very graceful, high spectacles. It's very over the top. I mean, when you call in a shop, for God's sakes, there's this whole on brand new animation. They really go crazy with the game. It's got its own flair and style to it. And I appreciate it for that. I know some people may not be on board with it and the story's okay. But what's really there is fantastic combat. I've heard a really good new game plus mode is in there, but for $40, that's about the price I got it for for my birthday. Highly recommended. Good deal right there. Next to it is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. One of the best RPGs to come out in this generation, believe it or not. The main issue with this game is that it is bloated. There is a lot of content here, and some people want to just continue with that main story, and you do have to indulge in some side content, which is why I initially said, wait for a sale around $45. And... Here we are looking at it for $30. Excellent deal, really good game. I love Cassandra, easily the best assassin in the entire series in my opinion. I like her more than Ezio. Just really good writing in the game. Excellent quests, interesting characters, good use of its time period, fantastic world, which Ubisoft has always done. I can't recommend Assassin's Creed Odyssey enough, especially at this price tag. You're really getting some bang for your buck. Like I said though, keep in mind that it does have a bloated feel to it. So one of my biggest things with games is I like the feeling of accomplishment, knowing I'm making progress and knowing I'm getting closer to beating it because that's the most successful part of it all in my opinion. You, you finish the game and with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it's a lot, a lot like uh, we'll say Divinity Original Sin where there's just so much there and so much to get through that sometimes you'll make a session of three to four hours and feel like you got nothing done and that's if you have time for that amount of play. So keep that in mind if you're indulging in that. If you're looking for something a bit shorter that you can repeat on playthroughs, Devil May Cry 5 is right up your alley. Rolling down here, role-playing games are thing. Okay, here we go. Wow, perfect game to recommend. Phantom Doctrine. I just made a 43-minute Patreon video breaking down everything about Phantom Doctrine on the Switch, actually. And I got it for a couple of bucks more actually on the Switch. I paid $17 for it. It was on like a 10% sale. But at $15.99, this is, in my opinion, a no-brainer. Now, you have to enjoy elements of tactical combat like XCOM. You have to enjoy a little bit of stealth, espionage, and some resource management. But there's amazing moment-to-moment -moment choices that affect your squad. There's a lot of training and perk building based off how much you bring someone into missions. Like I said, there's a stealth focus, which really helps it separate itself from XCOM. There's also these conspiracy investigation boards as you collect intel during your missions. You bring them to this bulletin board and you connect the dots and then find out new people to take down. And if you capture them, you can get more classified intel and then cycle that and, and keep repeating that. There's a main story there. It's very... 80s cold war-esque um you know no trust nobody really not the best uh it's not really what it's about in my opinion but especially for a price like this i think that's a little more forgivable that there isn't that great of a story in there and it's, it's quite nonsensical if i'm blatantly honest but it does not matter because I really like how you can build the characters in this game. For example, because it's it's very much about running your own underground operation in this Cold War era. Um, you can, for example, have your identity be compromised because you got caught during a mission. And now, mind you, if stealth goes wrong, you can shoot your way out of things or you can shoot your way into things. You can play how you want. But if your identity does get compromised, you have to completely create a new identity for your character, which brings you into a character creation menu. It's really, really fantastic stuff. I gotta say, it's it's a unique game. It stands on its own and deserves more attention. So Phantom Doctrine, definitely one you should check out. Chrono Trigger, I've never played, but I've heard amazing things. I'd say for $8, not too bad. 
Neo is another one I really, really enjoyed. I got the Platinum Trophy for it. it. Took me about 80 hours on the PlayStation 4. Now, with that said, just remember that the mob enemies in Neo are, are quite repetitive, but for $20, once again, I think that's easy to overlook. Let's keep scrolling down here. In the terms of stuff you can pass on, I've heard that Shining Resonance Refrain, for those of you out there who are JRPG lovers, I've heard this one is is not that good. So that is one that you can definitely miss out on. Featured franchises. Okay, Max Payne. Anything Max Payne you should own. That is one series that is consistently so good, but we see so little of. And you could just pick up Max Payne 3 and, and play that on its own for $7. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite games of the 360 PS3 genre and easily alongside, I'd say, Mass Effect 3, the most underrated multiplayer mode ever. Like, it, it is so, so good. And I don't know if it has a player base or if it'll increase because it is here on the front page in a featured franchise sale. But even if not, the single player campaign is really good, really enjoyable. The gunplay just feels so good. And obviously it uses the Euphoria from Rockstar. So there's a lot to love about Max Payne 3. And it's one that I hope I, that we see return at some point in time. But yeah, man, Max Payne 3, Instacop, and anything from Max Payne, if you haven't played it before, give it a look. Pretty gritty series. Borderlands franchise, you guys know I love Borderlands. Uh, if you don't own it already, you're doing yourself a disservice. The Handsome Collection for $25. Not too bad, I think, because it's saying it was originally $200. This does come with all of Borderlands, which, once again, not too bad. They just recently released, obviously, the Borderlands 1 Game of the Year edition, so that will be on sale. I would recommend that if you're brand new to the series. Uh, 2 is a lot more humorous, a lot more lighthearted, but it has some darker elements and better storytelling and you could just hop directly into two but i don't think two is as impactful if you don't play one it, it really leans on some of what made one its own thing so do keep that in mind the tomb raider games pretty solid i've never been a diehard fan of them personally i know that might be a hot take but rise of the tomb raider is easily the, the best one in the series shadow of the tomb raider however for 23 bucks, not bad. I know it's got its flaws, and a lot of people had an issue with Lara in this game, but I really liked what they did with her because they made her quite a flawed character, and, and actually I felt like you saw her grow. So personally, I'd say this is one that for 23 bucks, not a bad action adventure choice. I thought the whole hub area and sprawling out into a semi-open world thing was a little clunky it didn't fit the series at all i think this is a series that needs to remain in its linear fashion um so there is some teething issues we'll say with this game for you puppy lovers out there but despite all that solid game i do recommend it because it, it is quite fun my friend pedro never played it gonna play it though looks way too fun to pass up on i love the idea of like dancing alongside shooting your guns really unique idea quite unlike anything we've seen before seems like it's just a good fun 2d platformer mixed with all that and I, I can get behind that for sure all right so we opened up the rpg section because the storefront page is actually quite short it encourages you to dig into certain categories and as a role-playing game channel i thought there'd be nothing better to go into than the rpg section so we'll scroll through some options here Monster Hunter World at $30, that is an insanely good deal. It's got mixed reviews right now, so I wonder if the PC port's good, but if you do your research on that and it seems like it's up to snuff, $30 is a great price for this game. Uh, it's, it's one of the few good co-op multiplayer games out there that you can play with friends online, and it works well. Highly recommend it on that one. Slay the Spire. I've heard really neat things about this. It is a card game roguelike that's turn-based i think it's just got a good mixture of stuff that makes it intriguing enough where at 12 dollars it's absolutely something that's going to be an impulse purchase and one that i'd recommend you put on your radar i mean look at those reviews overwhelmingly positive after 25,000 reviews one of my good friends on youtube fighting cowboy you guys may have heard of him really likes this game so i like card games if you couldn't tell over here on the side of the video i have so much of my card game shit i play dragon ball super the card game so anything that has the words card game in it i am instantly privy to so do keep that in mind there is a little bit of bias there but i think this is unique enough often we see in these roguelikes it's a side scroller and it's got loot and you can speed run it it's like no bro like do something different and so here we are with something new a card game built into that which i enjoy quite a bit oh wait tucked over here is yakuza kiwami 
for $15. I picked this up about two Christmases ago. My mother got it for me, and let me tell you what, such a good game. Now, Kiwami 2 introduces a lot better gameplay systems, but I think the story takes a back seat because of that. It's just not as strong as the first one, and the first one really builds off of Zero, which a lot of people enjoy as well, and they think is easily the best of the series, but I have yet to play Zero. So I played Kiwami Fresh, and I loved it. I loved it. I thought the world was excellent. The mini games are such a welcome surprise inside a neat and interesting story, one that builds off the connections of Kiryu and those he loves. I think it's just a really, really good game, and it's got that arcade like combat with different fighting styles, and there's a great upgrade tree. Really recommend that one. The Yakuza series is gaining traction. Judgment just came out, so if you're looking at Judgment and maybe you're not convinced yet by some of its systems, they share a lot of DNA with the Yakuza series because Judgment is a spin-off of that series. Oh, and speaking of Yakuza 0, you can get that for $5 cheaper than Kiwami. So if you're really curious, and like I said, I've heard that people think 0 is better than Kiwami. $10, you cannot go wrong. Easiest $10 you'll spend this year. I mean, it will be a good experience. You will enjoy it most likely. So like I said, a lot of what I praised Kiwami for is in 0. I would, say, I would suggest just giving that a look if you can. Adam RPG. If you guys want to find me in this game, you can. I'm not just suggesting it because of that. The reviews seem good. I have yet to play it, but just a little fun fact. Maddie's Faced is in that game because I actually covered it a while ago, about a couple of years ago. And then developers reached out to me and said, hey, can you send us a picture of your face? Because we want to put you in our game. And I was like, well... Why the hell not? So, just a little Maddie fun fact there, $12, not too bad. Final Fantasy VII, $10. I imagine most huge RPG fans like you, like me, have played this game. I know with the Final Fantasy VII Remake, some are going, oh, I should just wait and play that. I still, to this day, and will forever, strongly recommend you play the original. A, so you understand what everyone's talking about, but B, I just get this strong feeling, despite how amazing the remake looks, okay, not even visually, but gameplay system wise, it's retaining a lot of DNA from the original, but evolving it in intelligent ways. It looks like it's shaping up to be a great game, so don't get me wrong, but I feel like concessions are going to have to be made somewhere. There's so much packed into Final Fantasy VII, like the date scenes, Cloud dressing up as a woman, which I think they already confirmed they're actually going to bring back, but modernize, but there's just some really interesting dialogue in this game and things that happen that you simply have to experience to understand why people are dying for a Final Fantasy 7 remake. I, I cannot stress it enough. So if you have yet to play Final Fantasy 7, I played this for the first time, okay? The first time in 2012. So I was kind of like up there in age, you know, it came out around the time I was born. So naturally I was late to it, but mind you, I played it quite recently in the scheme of things seven years ago, which, you know, that's not recent, but in the terms of how old this game is, I'd say it's somewhat recent, and I loved it. Not because it was a classic, just my friend said, you should try it, and I was like, okay, why not? And this was way before any remake talk was coming up. This was just Final Fantasy VII as a game that exists, and a lot of people really like it. And let me tell you what, man, special game. The fact that it's aged well in that kind of environment, especially when I would say I wasn't as good of a critic, and I wasn't easily able to you know pick games apart and understand the the smaller confines of what makes something great and it still stood out as something excellent I, I simply cannot recommend it enough here's a little fun recommendation rpg maker this was my introduction like i think many others to game development <laughs> i loved messing around in rpg maker even if you're not a game dev it's still fun to create something and I remember the days on my old compact laptop, I'd download RPG Maker and I'd make different levels and I'd show my family during dinner. And it was just some of the most satisfying stuff you could do. I mean, obviously I was a kid, so it was fun too, but I just fondly look back on that and I hope that other people can experience those types of things. Even if you don't want to show your parents or your friends, it's still fun to actually create a level in a simplistic manner and add character interactions and make something that actually is a world and, and see it all come to life. It's such a rewarding feeling. I, I can't suggest RPG Maker enough. Seriously, if you're into any form of game development, whether it's advanced, which I don't know if this would be good for you, or if it's a little dialed back, RPG Maker is a good little tool for, for just messing around with stuff.
Throne Breaker The Witcher Tales for $15. One of the most under-discussed, underselling games from CD Projekt Red and of last year in general. I, I can't believe that it actually didn't get as much attention because so many people love to praise CD Projekt Red and I thought this game would just take off in its own right because it was a card game with this crazy amount of role-playing depth. It takes a lot of the Gwent systems but then evolves them and there's so many memorable moments in this game. The characters are rich. I think the story was solid. But more than anything is the way that the gameplay comes to life by using these cards, the way they build conflicts by channeling your imagination and then successfully fulfilling that vision with the cards on screen. It's really hard to put into words until you obviously see some gameplay, but you play it for yourself. And for $15, man, I recommend this as a buy for $30. So at $15, do yourself a favor. If you want more Witcher, you want something a little different, this is your game. Please Take my word on it, it is a solid one if you can get into card games. It is really enjoyable and there's cool choices you can make in the moment to moment, but also stuff that has impact later on. I cannot stress it enough, great game. Okay, and we'll conclude it on one of my very favorite games of all time, Dragon Age Origins, the golden age of Bioware. I don't think I can do a Steam sale video without at least one golden age Bioware recommendation. What a rich soundtrack. A uh, very intriguing fantasy world. Obviously the choice and consequence you'd expect of old school Bioware when they had their shit together. And I think this would be a good game for folks who maybe haven't experienced it before to play. Because here's the thing ladies and gentlemen is that a lot of people have mired Bioware as public image and rightfully so because it they haven't done a good job with Anthem. And they've been on the decline for quite a while with games like I thought Inquisition personally a lot of people were disappointed with Dragon Age 2 obviously Andromeda was a huge snafu and then we had Anthem which was a mess and still is completely dead it's a really sad story so I would recommend this just so you guys know what Bioware was capable of at one point in time especially given that this is the ultimate edition it has the Return to Ostagar DLC amongst many others and Return to Ostagar is one of my personal favorite DLCs of all time because it plays off the main story in such an important way and also I thought the characters in your party were incredibly interesting you'll be very surprised with some of their fates and how you can really sway them one way or another and how the story will play out because of that there's a lot here that I love to death one of the very defining RPGs during my childhood I was about in sixth or seventh grade the first time I played this and I've replayed it for years and years man one of my very favorite games of all time, and I don't think I've ever recommended it in previous hot take videos, and if I have, I, I believe it was in passing. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to make this a more meaty hot take video because it is coming out at the very beginning of this sale. It actually worked out well. I was looking at the news today, and I was going, there's nothing to talk about, and this happened. I was like, okay, bang, there's today's video. So I wanted to make sure I gave you guys a ton of recommendations to work with, put games on your radar, even if maybe I haven't played them before, just ones that you should look into and maybe do your research on via reviews. But anyway, that'll conclude it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for deciding to spend some of your time here with me today on this, in my opinion, rainy Tuesday afternoon for you. Maybe a little bit different. It may be a completely different day, but who cares? Anyway, I'd love to hear some of your Steam sale recommendations in the comments down below. So do fire away, ladies and gentlemen. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.